Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu's work in helping end the apartheid in South Africa. Um, Frederick Douglass's work in helping end slavery in the United States and Daniel O'Connell's work in helping liberate the Catholic people are all inspirational because they accomplished their work in a time where it seemed like the whole world was working against them. So it just serves as motivation to anybody today who is trying to establish an environment of peace and equality because they can always look back on the giants who came before them and look, see how they accomplished their goals in a much more chaotic time, right? And say, and they can think, you know, why can't I do the same? Um, but being from the University of Rochester, the life of Frederick Douglass is the most interesting to me because, I mean, when you think about how he moved from the United States to Ireland in 1845 and heard uh, Daniel O'Connell speak for the first time and said that that is partly what motivated him to go back to the United States and continue his fight against slavery. It just shows um, the importance of studying abroad, of of entering into a new environment. And it's really my inspiration for wanting to study abroad so bad at the University of Rochester. Um, my greatest leadership challenge certainly happened in high school. It was when I was an orientation leader at freshman orientation. And my goal was to tour a group of eight freshmen around campus and get them accustomed to life in private school. So, but what made this so challenging was the fact that these kids are only 14 years old. They're all super nervous and this is their first time in the environment. So, oh, and I'm also the only person that they really know. So I'm someone that they're looking to as the sole person for guidance and leadership. And it's a lot of responsibility, but I welcome that challenge. Um, I really wanted the kids to know that I cared about them and that I was someone at the university who wanted or at the school who wanted the best for them, hoping that, you know, that would get them to open up and share a little bit about themselves. And I think it worked because we ended up having a fun and engaging day. The kids uh, loved talking about what made them unique. And it was that day when I really learned that people can tell when you're actually genuinely caring about them and when you're putting on a facade. And when you actually are genuinely caring about them, they're much more open with you and it makes it that much easier to build that welcoming environment that you want to build and build and that you want to be in. Um, the third question about how I use my communication platforms to influence people for, uh, positively. I really only post on social media when I'm sharing my beliefs, but it's not just to get other people to believe what I believe, right? It's to show people that it's not only okay, but it's necessary to share what you believe regardless of what you think the reaction from the general population is going to be. Because the only way we can grow in our knowledge and understanding is by hearing people out and hearing point of views that we disagree with, right? If you have one person that is living in a lie, one person that's living in a truth, but the person who's living in a truth never shares the truth of the person living in a lie, they're doing this person a disservice because they're enabling this person to live in darkness for their whole life. And that leads me to uh, the fourth question, which is how do I respond when, um, when I hear a position contrary to my own? And to answer that, I listen, right? I, and I mean, I really listen. Um, without trying to formulate a response or a rebuttal in my head while the other person is speaking, um, because that's the only way that I can learn more, right? Again, if this person, if there's one person living in a lie and one person who's living in the truth, it's not only on this person who's living in the truth. If this person living in the truth decides that they wanna share the truth with the person living in a lie, this person living in a lie has to uh, be open and hear them out and um, listen to their ideas, right? And then maybe we can reach a day where the truth is widely accepted. Um, so, you know, we can see that it's really a a mutual responsibility, not only to speak out, but also to hear the other person out. And I will end this video with a quote from a man that I deeply admire and respect named Myron Golden. He says that a lie always has to hide from the truth, but the truth never has to hide from a lie. Thank you.